Right, Shalom. Brother Azamawaf. Brother Azamawaf. Kanye, we back again with another lesson. What? Well, more so a, a camp. You know, I'm so used to saying lesson. But we're holding a camp tonight out here in downtown Dallas. Lord willing, you brothers and sisters will be edified at, uh, on this lesson. But before we get started, we're going to give our praise and our glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, That's all praises to the Heavenly Father and Son's name, who the world ain't really calls Jesus Christ, real name of the Hebrews, Yahweh Shah. Also give a praise and glory to the Holy Spirit as well, which is the force and entity that makes this edification possible. I want to say Shalom to all you sincere hearted at Akim and Akwa. Let's make your bodies a living sacrifice on a daily basis. I also want to give double honors unto the, unto the elders and apostles of GMS who taught us this truth and who rule well. So tonight is the same business as usual, man. Right? It's repent or die. Right? Because we're living in beautiful but yet dangerous times, man. Right? We're living at the time to where our foreparents, you know, dream. They long to see this day. When you read Matthew chapter 13, verse 15, as a matter of fact, yeah, get that again. I was just looking at it. Yep. You read that last one. Uh huh. We live in some in some in some beautiful but yet dangerous times, man. You got to tread lightly. And for those of you that's in this truth, this is the time to be watching your step, man. Right? Because as a, as a uh, apostle to heart has stated earlier this week, man, we're working for the King of the Universe. Right? When you approach your King, right? When you read Psalm chapter sixty-five, verse four, it says, "Blessed is the man whom Thou hast chooses to approach unto Thee." Now, when you when the King summons you to Him. Right, you just don't walk to the king haphazardly, man. You just don't move any type of weight. You don't sacrifice any type of weight. Right, you have to move very cautiously. Right, especially when you see the king's judgment being put forth out on planet Earth at a rapid rate, man. And it's only going to get worse and worse and worse. See, we're living in a time where Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, is about to make his final move. This man has grown up in perfection. Right, the Lord has allowed this man to rise up in might in his military in his sorceries, in his witchcraft, in his spiritual adultery, physical adultery, and all different types of wickedness just to bring this man down. And the way he's going to be brought down according to Holy Scriptures is going to be by a horrible end. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, last verse. Right? But as a matter of fact, grab that up. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 16. But blessed are your eyes. He said, but blessed are your eyes. Well, really good. Okay. Okay, come on. 17. For verily I say unto you that many prophets... And righteous men have desired to see those things which you see. See that? They have desired to see those things which you see. The many prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, right? They have desired to see the things which we see. And what do we see? We see Sodom and Gomorrah times 10. We see Egypt times 100, <laughs> right? They desired to see this. John the Revelator was marveling at this whore, man, when he saw it in Revelation, right? When he saw it in vision. Right now, we understand that some of those prophets are back on the scene today. We don't know who they are, but these men long to see what we see, man. So, going back to the original point that the Spirit of made, we're living in beautiful but yet dangerous times. Go ahead, huh? And have not seen them, uh -huh. and to hear those things which you hear, yep. and have not heard them. That's, that's, that's it. God, yeah, you go Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 3 from the top. Uh -huh. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. So he says, in the last days, which we understand we're well in the last days, man. Because <laughs> Esau Edom is synonymous with the last or the end. Right? We're in the last days of this man's empire. Right? He says, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Now, when you go to the word perilous in the Greek, it's uh chalapos. And what does it say? Hard to do, hard to bear, troublesome, dangerous. See that? Beautiful but yet dangerous times, man. Now it's beautiful on one hand because wow, we saw, we've been seeing the mass awakening of the so-called black Hispanic and Native Americans, which are the true biblical Israelites. So it's beautiful in that regard, but yet dangerous, why? Because now the Lord is starting judgment at the house of his own people and he's about to spread forth his judgment unto all the other Gentiles, man. And when the Lord works in his judgment, it's very cruel, man. <laughs> so cruel to where this is how he gets his name, man. <laughs> right? Well, he, nickname, uh, heathens nickname him Alishaja, which means great demon-like power, man. So the Lord's about to remind humanity of his power, man. Because these little niggas around here running around with skinny jeans, with chicken bone, and a blunt out the side of their mouth, totally forgot their creator, man. 
Right, as a matter of fact, hold that. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. Right, because many of you people are going to die of gruesome, horrible deaths, man. Orchestrated by your Yahweh Shemal Shah. And the main death and the main plague that the Lord has prepared for most of you evildoers out here is the, is the plague of famine. See, your grocery bills about to start going up. And you average everyday Joe Blow Edomites. And you, and you, you know, <laughs> you wicked two-thirds, right? Y'all don't, that don't pay no attention to the most high. See, y'all don't have enough money. Y'all don't have enough food. Stop. Oh, you want, you want okay. uh, no, uh, Ecclesiastes. Eight and one? Uh, eight, eight and eleven. Okay, eight and eleven. Yep. Right. This is Ecclesiastes chapter eight, verse eleven. Uh-huh. Because sentence against the evil work is not executed speedily. Yeah, so he says because sentence against the evil work is not executed speedily. Go ahead. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is is fully set in them to do evil. Yeah, and that's why the hearts of y'all, meaning the minds of y'all, is fully set. Like, y'all are fully, like, <laughs> locked in on doing evil. Because y'all have been so estranged from seeing the works and the terrors of Yahweh Shem Shah. See, and this is the beauty of the Lord giving us the gift of faith. Right, because we don't have to see the Lord's judgment right <laughs> like these people are gonna have to see in order for us to believe right, right? because when you read Sirach, hey how y'all doing, we doing fine. How are that's you? good when you read Sirach chapter 36 as a matter of fact grab that for me right because once again let me let me read this in psalm chapter 9 right because the lord is going to make himself known in planet earth once again just like he did in the time of the flood just like he did in the time of sodom and gomorrah right it's nothing new it's the psalms 9 and 16 it says yahweh is known by the judgment which he executed. That's how the Lord is known. When he starts putting niggas to death. So you've been marching because well, one nigga get shot by a so-called cop or whatever, right? But you, hey man, the type of deaths that the Lord has prepared for people in the last days, it comes, it's pale comparison to what you see right now. So the Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. And, and that goes for the wicked of our people and also the wicked uh, uh, a so-called white man It's your own works That got you caught up in this snare Your works of uh, uh, wickedness You go ahead The Sirach chapter 39 verse 28 There be spirits that are created for vengeance Which in their fury Lay on short strokes In the time of their destruction They pour out their force Yeah they're spirits that's created Right for, for the Lord's vengeance man Which is a cut on you damn Christians We talk about these evil spirits Or demons just have a mind of their own and the Lord is fighting them. He's, he's at conflict with them. No. The Lord created them, man. All right? You can read that in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I mean, uh, chapter 18, verse 18. Uh, what was that? 2 Kings chapter, uh, what, 18, I believe? 1 uh, Kings 22. 1 Kings 22. Yeah. You know? And all throughout the scriptures, man. Psalms 109 speaks about how the angels do his uh, commandments. They delight in his commandments. All right? So the Lord created these demons, man. Right? The Lord created these demons specifically, especially for these last days. Yep. I'm going to show you. Like it says, the Bible says famine was created for the wicked. Woo. What was that? Sorry, 40? Yeah, 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 we're about to get there. Yeah. yeah. I'm by next side. Yep. Yeah, you got it. Yep, yep. Uh, and appease the wrath of him that made them. Woo! Meaning he's pleased yep, yep. when they do his bidding, man. The Lord ain't angry. Oh, Satan, why did you resist my will? I didn't want you to know. The Lord's like, good job. Yep. He's like, you know what? I want another demon to go do the same thing. So this time, do it 10 times harder, man. Make sure they little one don't eat. Make sure you starve out the grandma. Right? See, that's what's coming to America, man. Because this land has known nothing but luxury. Nothing but excess. Right? You usually have leftovers the night after or the day after. Well, pretty soon, man, <laughs> there's going to be... Listen, you're going to be asking yourself, I remember the days of leftovers, man. Damn, I remember the days of food. Yeah. Because, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, food's about to be limited very soon. Bro, very limited. Yep. And we're going to grab Genesis 41 uh, here later on. You know? And you read you read through that? Yeah, it's not like the... Uh, yeah, I read through the Yeah, Egypt and like yeah. the storehouses. And, yeah. And yeah, you got it throw out. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these Woo. were created for vengeance. Hold on, fire and hell and what? And famine. And famine. See, famine just ain't something that just happens. Famine is an actual spirit. <laughs> it's an actual spirit behind famine, man. It's an actual entity that the Lord created. 
proven that famine is a plague, man. Right? So let's get that. Oh, uh, yeah, keep reading that. Because yeah, they didn't, uh, wasn't the plagues of Egypt, didn't they, uh, the locusts that eat, eat the crops? Mm hmm Yep. And, so, uh, and and what is crops? Crops is, is really like the, the, the economy of a country, man. So when the Lord sent out the locusts to eat the crops of, of Egypt of old, that was really him taking out the economy. And you see America, man. America's economy is finished, right? And really, the Lord is so cold with it, he played on the minds of the elites to where he didn't even have to send locusts. He just said, you know what? Y'all destroy your own crops. To where the elites commanded the farmers, they've been telling the farmers, listen, cut down your crops. And then they sent in this devil, Bill Gates of hell, to buy up all the farmland, right? <laughs> so once again, the wicked is snared in the works of his own hands, right? So the reason why you ain't eating is because the people who you voted for. <laughs> How about that? You voted for famine, man. So you niggas voted for death, right? And what does the scripture say in Isaiah chapter 30? Because if you were a true American, you would have voted for Trump. <laughs> right. <Biden. laughs> right. Trump was trying to help y'all niggas, man. Although, you know, even behind the scenes, he was actually signing a lot of laws and legislations, you know, that basically allowed uh, uh, Biden to do what he's doing right now. But really, he's out of all the devils, I guess if there is such a thing, you could say he was the best devil, yeah. you know, <laughs> for you people. Right. But this is Isaiah 30 and verse uh, 12 says, Wherefore, thus saith Yahweh, Salakia, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise his word and trust in oppression. See that? And that's the case for our people, man. They despise the words of the Heavenly Father. And they trust in oppression. Right? And so they go so far to the point to where they vote for oppression. Right? Now, you don't hear any Negroes right now talking about how glad they are that Biden is in office. When he first came in office, that's all you heard about. But you don't hear that no more. They don't talk about Jesus no more. They don't talk about Biden no give more. Give him some time. <laughs> Been hearing that for years. And he said what? They always say, give him some time. Yeah, yeah. Give him some time. Give him some time to do what? To, to finish finish you people off? You already got, um, you know, Apostle Tahar had put it up on his video last night. He uh, he sent he put a link in one of his description boxes. And uh, it's basically how they found out that the the, the, the dragon juice has his, um, has his, uh, uh, what do you call it? A uh, micro or a microscopic organism that's called Hydra. You saw that? Uh, I, I know the video you're talking about, but I forgot to click on it. Yeah, and Hydra is basically a self replicating uh, germ. Like, you cannot kill this thing. Like, if you even if you chop it in a in, in million pieces, guess what? A million pieces, uh, a million of new Hydra is going to grow up. And that's what's inside of Dragon Jukes, man. They, they even put it, they even put it on the internet just so you can see. <laughs> And that's what you people uh, uh, voted for. You voted for death, man. So you, now you're going to get death. Right? So, wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise his word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity. So that's an iniquity for you to do that, for you to trust in oppression. He says, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach. And what's a breach? A breach is basically like a, a crack. You know, a breach is a, is a gap in a wall. And if you got a gap in a wall, you're just waiting for the building to fall at any moment. So this iniquity is a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instance. And you trust in America, you trust it in this breach, America. It's about to just fall at any given moment, man. The Lord is removed. It's, it's kind of like that, that, uh, that game, what was it called? Uh, Django or something? Yeah, where you got the little wooden blocks. Each and every day, the Lord is pulling another block out of this place. <laughs> so you're just waiting for it at any moment just to, you know, you wake up one, one morning and you check your bank account. And they said out of, today's the dollar's cr crash. Yeah, the economy crash. And your, had, your ass had $10,000 in the bank. And now you can't, you, you ain't got nothing to prove it. You know? But yet, you, you niggas trust in this, man. You working your ass off from, you know, sun up to sundown, trusting in the dollar. That can collapse at any moment to where you should be putting your time and energy into serving the king of the universe. All right? But yeah, you got that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 10. Mm. Never trust thy enemy. Woo! For like his iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Now, it, and that's a, hard, that's a hard saying for a lot of our people. 
they still cannot believe till 2021 right. that they actually have enemies. Right. You niggas, you actually got enemies, man. We shouldn't even have to Tell you, go bro. out there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you don't know that Esau is your enemy, then you're, well, you're number one enemy because we got enemies. Yeah. But come on, bro. Yep. All you got to do, turn on the Django, turn on Roots, turn on uh, Nat Turner. Or, I mean, uh, what is that? Birth of a Nation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh hell, ask your grandparents, man. Just go outside. Check your family tree. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, like the brother just said, go outside. Go outside. <laughs> they'll, they'll show you. They'll look, show you look at the prison, prison house statistics. See if you got enemies. Look and see every job, who was you working for? Right, yeah. Who's over you? Who's over you? Who's in the office? Yep. Who made you pay child support? Yep. <laughs> That's your enemy, man. Whose last name do you have? That's your enemy, man. Yeah. That proves you, yeah. You're not <laughs> supposed to be over here, bro. All right. See, Jake, if you, if you understand prophecy, everything the Bible says makes sense. Yep. Us being here in America proves that the Bible is real. Mm-hmm. Yep. As a matter of fact, uh, are you holding something? I was going to get you a my 17. Okay, come. Uh, you want me to get something? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, grab, me, uh, grab me Isaiah 3. Oh, come. Isaiah 3 and 1. Yep. Back to basics. Yep. Isaiah 3 and 1. And while he gets that, I'm going to get this in 2nd Ezra chapter 16. Right, this second because this is the current condition of the uh, of the world right now. Everybody is is doubting, you know. Everybody is, is basically has a um, has a perplexed mind, just like Yahweh Shah said in Luke twenty one. Let me grab that real quick. It's the book of Luke, chapter twenty one, verse. Uh, Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. Luke 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. And that's exactly what you have, man. You have upon the earth the distress of nations right now. When you go into that word distress, it basically means uneasiness of mind. Pretty much you're bugged out of your mind. You're in a confused state. And that's the state of the nations of people right now. Right? It says, with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. And what's the sea representative of in the Bible? The nations. Particularly when you read Isaiah chapter 57, it says that the wicked, let me grab that. It's Isaiah 57 and verse uh, 20. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. See that? So the wicked, and we know who the wicked is, Malachi 1 and 4. It says, it's like the troubled sea. When they are stirred up, they cast forth dirt and mire and clay. And so this man has been stirred up. The Lord has aroused Esau's spirit, right? He's put that, because for, for a time, the Lord basically made Esau's killing spirit, you know, his blessing of the sword, kind of lie dormant, man. You know, right? Because in, compared to the way how he gained this land, America, this man's actually kind of played it cool for the past couple years, man. But see, the, we're living those days to where the Lord is stirring this man's spirit back up. And, synony and synonymously, while he's stirring this man's spirit up, what gets stirred up along with him? Dirt, man. So this man is bringing up a lot of dirt, a lot of wickedness in planet Earth while he's getting getting back to his to his movements. So, and in, 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 uh, in essence, you people about to die. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, bro, that, at the end of the day, that's the only message we can tell you. Or die. It's repent or die. Most right? Is a dictator. He's not what you people think he is. Yep. You don't have a choice. <laughs> Say that again. You bro. don't have a choice. You don't have a choice, man. You don't. Sorry to tell you. You know, I know. I know. TD Jakes told you you have a choice. You know, I know. Joel Osteen told you that that you have free will, but you don't, man. If you want to live, you you really gotta sit down and like really sit down. Stop me thinking about this. Sit down with yourself and think about this. If you truly want to live, what do you have to do? Hmm. Serve the most high. Because if you don't do that, you're going to die. Hmm. You know? Man. Like, you, that you're going to die. <laughs> we were talking about that yesterday. <laughs> like, you're going to die. Yeah. You yeah. Yep. So this second is 16, and I'm going to start at verse 17, says, Woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Right? And we understand that Yahweh Shah is the deliverer. That's his name. He who delivers. And that's what we have faith in, man. As crazy as we may seem, as crazy as we may sound and look, right? 
understanding that we're on the brink of famine, we're on the brink of martial law, we're on the brink of FEMA camps, we're on the brink of the MOTB. We still understand and we believe, man. This is our only hope that Yahweh Shah will deliver us. Because it's, it's already written. Yep. Okay. And it's written, man. And if you want to say that this Bible ain't true, well, if this Bible ain't true, we all fuck, man. Excuse my French. It's just, it's just, it's that simple. No other philosophy is talking about what this Bible is talking about. Yeah. Go in the Quran. There's not one prophecy in there, man. Go to the Book of the Dead. Well, you don't want to go there because then it's going to promote you having sex with your son. Even the title, bro, the Book of the Dead. This right. Is, this is a book of life, bro. We're trying to get new bodies, a kingdom, you know. We're trying to gain the whole world, bro. Yep. But I got to show you. Niggas love death. They read out a book that's literally called the Book of the Dead, bro. Bro, how 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 finished can you be? Yeah. <laughs> like literally, how finished can you be, man? Right. So we understand that Yahweh Shah will deliver us, and we believe that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna read this. Man. You got it. Um, going back, Second Ezra 16, verse uh, damn, 18. The beginning of sorrows, and that's the time we in. Is the beginning of sorrows. Right, you think that you're solved for right now. You think that the world is in a perplexed state right now. Well, wait, there's more. <laughs> Says, and great mornings, the beginning of famine. See that? The beginning of famine. And we understand that famine is the actual spirit, man. Right? Says, the beginning of famine and great death. Because we're used to death, but we haven't seen great death, man. We haven't seen death. When you read, huh? Now, I was gonna say this is a precept. You are probably about to say this. The second uh -huh. Ezra's. I haven't went to it in a while. Nah, fifteen uh -huh. or six. I think it's fifteen. That says like a man's gonna desire to see. Mm -hmm. Basically, somebody he's gonna desire yep. to see a living being. There's mm -hmm. gonna be so many dead people that it's crazy to think about. Yeah, it, 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 it's probably. gonna be just like the Book of Eli. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that movie, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah this yeah. second Ezra's sixteen. While he's finding it, says the beginning of sorrows and great mournings. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars and the powers, and the powers is speaking about the governments. Right? The begin uh Salakid. And the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evil. And you know what proves that? When China just last week, when they uh shot that intercontinental ballistic missile, you know, around planet Earth, what, what it said the United States, hey, they were in fear, man. They were in fear. Why? Because we're in the beginning. Of the, of, the, of the world's climax, man. The most beautiful but yet dangerous times. And he says, a beginning of uh, Salakia, the power shall stand in fear, the blessings, the, Salakia, the beginning of evils, what shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague. See that? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation, anguish are sent as scourges for a amendment. So the Lord's about to send great famine upon this place. You used to eating at Wing Bucket or Subway, wherever you eat, but guess what? The Lord's about to send a, a great famine upon this place for a scourges of amendments. But as, as you read, it says that they did not lay it to mind. Although the Lord was sending these things, right, even though his grace was still open. And the very fact, the very proof that grace is still open is that we still on the street corners right now. While all this still is going on. Now it would be different if this stuff was going on and we weren't here. Going to show that the then the Lord's the Lord, his grace period will be up. But see, the Lord is doing this to basically charge it to your mind. He's giving Jake one last chance, bro. Man. The door is still open. It's like, we're like right here, bro. Yep. Because if you can't tell, they're getting more strict, stricter with YouTube, what mm -hmm. you say, on Facebook. You can't even say certain stuff on videos anymore now, yeah. bro. Yeah. They can take your video down. Yep. So that goes to show you that we're living in those times, bro, because it wasn't like this. Uh, you know, Israelite videos uh, a few years ago. Now it's getting to the T where we really have to watch what we say because the devil's gonna take the video down. Yep. So the family of the word is coming, bro. Yep. And that little that little deal that, that they did with Facebook, you know, like two weeks ago, where they took Facebook down for a day, they was just letting you know what's, what they about to do, man. You know, and you niggas freaked out over a half a day of Facebook being gone. So just imagine all of your social media platforms being gone, and then we're off the streets. That's the Lord saying, listen, I'm done talking. It's just all business at that point, man. Yeah, that, that's when the elect is going to be seen. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the gospel, so everybody's going to hear the gospel, then the end shall come. Mm -hmm. But I found a precept that I want to get. Okay, come on, yeah, you got it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start here. This is 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 22. Uh -huh. For many of them, 
that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine. See that? This ain't us making it up, man. And I'm going to keep uh, through the spirit. This is a prophecy. Yeah, this is a prophecy. And then we're going to keep saying through the spirit. We're going to keep talking about famines, man. All right, because this, we can't overlook this plague, man. Now, we talk about the missiles all the time. We talk about, you know, gunshots all the time, you know. But one thing that, that's easy, easily overlooked, but yet the most part, would, as a matter of fact, grab me Lamentations 4. Hold that, what you got, because it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, Lamentations it's, 4, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, they that be slain under the sword. Better than famine. Because famine is the worst, is the worst way to go out, man. Right? Scriptures talk about that. Let me see if I can get you. Nah, I'm uh, Lamentation 4. Yeah, and I want to say, uh, that verse, uh, verse 9. <laughs> This is Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 9. Uh -huh. They that be slain with the sword. Yeah, they that be slain with the sword, and what's the modern day sword? The gun. Go ahead. Are better than they that be slain with hunger. Hold up. So the scriptures is saying, man, this is the Lord, this is Yahweh Bashmah Shah telling you, it would be better off for you to get shot in the head than you to die of hunger. Yeah. See that? And that's what's coming to America. It's massive famine. When we continue to read down the second Ezra, right, let me just get that real quick. He says, for many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So, you know? So it's going to be, it's, I believe through the Spirit, it's probably going to be more that die of famine. Right? Now, it's just my, my personal opinion. We don't know how it's all going to play out. Right? But those that escape the hunger, well, you're just going to be off by a gun or whatever, man. Yeah, it says that, it says that basically in uh, Amos chapter 5, verse 18, mm. uh, verse 20, 21. Oh, nowhere to keep the flee. Yeah, basically, like, it's a man that, uh... Hider. Goes to his house, just to put his hand there, to a snake bites him. Mm -hmm. Basically, he's saying, like, you can't run in that day, bro. Like, yep. there's nothing you can do. Yeah, yeah, go back to Lamentation. Let me finish that off. Lamentation or second area? Yeah, Lamentation. I got a uh, second area. Right, uh, for, it says, uh... Yeah. For these, pine away... You start from the top. Con. Lamentation, chapter 4, verse 9. Uh-huh. They that be slain with the sword... Yeah, they that be slain of the sword, go ahead. Are better than they that be slain with hunger. Are better than they that be slain of hunger. I'm going to show you that famine is actually, that's the worst type of plague that the Lord can give you, man. Well, one of them. Yeah. Right? Because you just, well, as a matter of fact, I'm about to tell you. Go ahead. For these pine away, stricken through for one of the fruits of the field. What does that mean, you pine away? I mean that you're each and every single second, you're just yeah. diminishing less and less and less. But yet, you're wanting of the fruits of the field. Yeah, you want some food. Yeah, you're remembering your favorite dish. At you know, <laughs> at uh, at Checkers or, or or Papa Do's, you remembering what that salmon tasted like, man. But yeah, your ass over here pining away, and the Lord, the, all the while He's tormenting you, man. He make you have flashbacks of that. He make you have flashbacks of all the Arby's commercials, you know. <laughs> hey, the Lord gonna torture you like that, man. He gonna make you start salivating, you know, and you gonna start digging in some dirt, thinking that you 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 having like a, a hallucination. And you digging in some dirt and you find a rock and you bite into it, digging in some bread. <laughs> you know? Cause you start losing it when you when you when you, when you haven't had food for a while. And you, you literally start looking at objects like it's actual food, man. Bro, that's horrible, bro. And see, this is the power that we're dealing with. So like brother said, hey, it's just best off to serve the Lord, man, and just hope. Like that's your only option. <laughs> because what what else can you do, bro? What else knowing, can you knowing do? Knowing the stuff we know. What, like it says, what, uh, Second Peter 3? Mm -hmm. What, what matter of patience Ooh, I yeah, used to be? We yeah. can get that this. Yep. Yep. But, there you uh, go with something. Yeah, back to the, um, what up, the point. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get this in uh, Revelation after you get yours. Come on, it says, verse 23, And the dead shall be cast out as dung. Woo! What does that mean, the dead shall be cast out as dung? Dung is shit, man. So that's how the Lord's gonna view and treat you people. <laughs> He's gonna treat y'all like shit. All right, just like a dog taking a shit on the ground out here in the concrete of Dallas. Well, that's how y'all gonna be, man. All right, go ahead. And there should be no man that comfort them. What verse is that? 23. Yeah, right, it's about uh, to go into Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And there's gonna be nobody to comfort you, man. So you used to go to these funerals, but guess what? Those funerals are gonna be long gone. Yeah, everybody gonna be dead, man. Yeah. <laughs> it says, for the earth shall be wasted Woo! and the city shall be cast down. And the city shall be cast down. Yep, you go ahead. It says, there shall be no man left to till the earth uh -huh. and to sow it. Yep. The trees shall give fruit 
and who shall gather them? Mm. The grapes shall uh, ripe, and who shall tread them? Mm -hmm. For all places shall be desolate of men, is the point. So that one man shall desire to see another man. and to hear his voice. So it's gonna get so bad that you're mm. gonna wish, you're gonna desire to see somebody, mm. just to hear somebody's voice. That's how, that's how much dead people is gonna be, yep. you know? Yep. And the very fact, you know, that that's gonna be so much death goes to show you that you're living in the so-called white man's rule and reign of terror. Because when you read uh, Grammy, uh, Revelation 6 and verse 8, right? Because although this prophecy already came to fulfillment, I believe by uh, Christopher Columbus, right? <laughs> this is still the Edomites rule and reign of terror, man, right? I'm going to have to double check on that, you know, if, if this prophecy does uh, fulfill Christopher Columbus. I believe it does, but, oh, you know, six. yeah, Revelation 6 and 9, I mean 6 okay. and 8, what okay. you're about to read. This right, but, but nonetheless, this is an Edomite fulfilled prophecy. Yeah, nothing new under the sun. Yeah, nothing new under the sun. Yeah, you can't say something that's been new. And, uh, I'm going to see that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yep. It says, uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 8, and I looked and behold, and beheld, a pale horse, uh -huh. and his name that sat on him was death. And his name that sat on him was death. Now, was it an actual, uh, an actual man sitting on a horse and his name was death? No. Yeah, no. This is symbolic unto a particular nation of people. And this was in the last days in the book of Revelation. Yeah. And who's ruling in the last days? Esau, man. I'm going to show that Esau is literally death. Everywhere this man goes, he spreads forth death, man. Yeah, he's, he's a parasite. Yep. He's, he's anti the laws of the heavenly father, bro. Uh -huh. Every single law, bro, he's against. <laughs> Man. Like we was going into earlier, I was watching a video about how important uh, having 100%, uh, you know, clothing, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because seriously, yeah. like, it's, it's very oh, important, yeah, yeah. bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, because if you mix your clothes, bro, the fabrics, it does something to your body, literally. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. that's a great lesson because I honestly never knew why we had to, uh, you know, not have it mixed, but it makes sense, bro. Yeah. And now also, you know, laying back on what the brother's talking about, why, you know, how the Lord basically went into the science of why you shouldn't or that you shouldn't wear mixed clothing. Now, we understand that our robes of righteousness or our clothing of being this truth is also symbolic to those clothes. Yeah. So you should not mix a little bit of that truth and a little bit of this truth, so-called truth, together and you wear that. Because then it's going to throw you off. It's going to throw off your vibrations. That's why you got to have that whole complete covering. See? So yeah, you got that. And hell, and hell yeah, start follow. The top. Okay, call it. This Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. And I looked and beheld a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. Mm. And hell follows. See that? And hell, what's synonymous with hell? Captivity. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 5. Therefore, hell have enlarged itself. Yep. Zion have went to captivity. So death. And captivity has followed this particular person. Sound familiar? <laughs> All right, go ahead. And power was given unto them. See that? But power was given unto him. Now, who was that power given uh, given by? You read John three and John three twenty seven. It says a man can receive nothing except my Father give it to him from above. Man, see? Yeah, Daniel, so Daniel Like it says Daniel four and twenty six. I believe four seventeen. Yeah, four seventeen. Yep. 4, 17 that, uh, the Lord ruler getting men. The Most High, bro. He's in control of everything. Yep. So the Lord is controlling death. You read Revelation 1 and 18, it says that he has the, the keys of uh, of hell. See that? And the grave. So yeah, go ahead. Over the fourth part of the earth. Now, come on. What's the fourth part of the earth? That's America, man. You just simply Google it. We're not, hey, this Bible's about to come to life. Man. It's already come to life. Google what is the fourth part of the earth. It's going to literally pop up America. So here in America, in the fourth part of the earth, hell and captivity was going to be on this horse symbolizing power right go ahead to kill with sword and with hunger to kill hold on to kill with sword we already know the history of that and with what and with hunger and with hunger see it's prophesied in the last days that this man has to plan on starve you niggas out man <laughs> this because food is a weapon man anything that this devil touches is a weapon he was gifted with the gift of the sword if he touches a pen it turns into a weapon in his hands if he touches a Bible, <laughs> we've seen that. If he touches a Bible, it turns into a weapon. Don't believe me? Hold up that sign. 
This is what you get when this nigga hold, hold the Bible. And this was a weapon, man. Right? So he kills with the sword. He kills with hunger. Right? Go ahead. And with death and with the beasts of the earth. And with death and with the beasts of the earth. And, hey, and once again, everything like that beautiful priest that the brother pulled a couple days ago, uh, Psalms 24, the earth and the fullness thereof is the Lord's. And the beasts thereof, scriptures talk about how there's going to be newly created creatures made. Yeah. Just for these days, man. Yeah, I, and, I, and I believe, you know, this no Bible verse that says it, but I believe the Bible then is going to be, you know, showing that day. Yeah. For judgment, to kill a lot of people. Yep, I believe that too. You're going to have Slender Man. All these uh, these, uh, these movies that these create, uh, these uh, movie directors made, like yeah. Saw and shit like that. Hey, bro, you're going to see some crazy ass shit. Because this is the last final scene of wickedness. You don't think the Lord about to show out? Like like the movie uh, <laughs> Purge, yeah. I yeah. believe that, that's going to be oh, yeah. reality soon. Yeah. All these racist Edomites, they're going to be killing Jay. Yep. And just imagine, now Purge was just a movie, man. That wasn't even reality, and that scene fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't even reality. So imagine you being in the middle of the streets, seeing that stuff, man. And see, this is what's coming up, man. This is what's coming up, and this is why we're, we're trying to diligently push his word out into you, man. Right? Because this is the time to get understanding. Because you ain't going to be trying to go into no breakdowns in the damn FEMA camp. <laughs> you know? You ain't trying to have Bible study or listen to a video in the FEMA camp. This is your time right now to get this word, get an understanding of it, and get it for yourself, man. This ain't the time to be trying to cut your grandma and shit, man. That ain't what the Lord gave us his word for. To you try to be the deepest nigga in the barbershop. Try to be the deepest nigga in your house or whatever. Right. No, this word was for, to save you. Now, if the Lord works out a way to where you can be a witness to other people, beautiful. Yeah. But we already know that ain't gonna happen. You know, for for majority of the cases. Well, we are we are here for really ourselves, really. Yep. But we can be saved, bro. Yep. Jeremiah three says that he's gonna take two or three of a family, man. If that. Yeah, like Night Crime used to always say, man, I'm out here for myself, bro. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Paul tells you to be, you know? Paul tells you to be. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know? Hey, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, Ezekiel? Uh, yeah, I get it. Talking about Noah, Daniel can only deliver themselves. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, I got okay, yeah. This uh, Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Yep, yeah, you can break down. So basically, when all hell breaks loose, like the brother's saying, this wisdom and knowledge is going to stable us in the mind, you know? We're not going to be worried about uh, what's, you know, what's going on, what's the next move, like why is this happening? Because we've already been studying the scriptures and we've been taking the time out and being diligent and studying. Mm -hmm. That's basically what he's saying. Yep. Yeah, this is Ezekiel 14 and 14. He says, though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, see that in what? In tribulation. Though they were in it, were, were in it, they should deliver, but their own souls by their righteousness, save you how power, man. So the Lord uh, called to mind three, no man, just imagine that the king of the universe remembers you, first and foremost. You know, but the Lord remembered these three men and called them to mind and said, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, right? They should deliver but their own souls, right? <laughs> so yeah, we're out here to be a light unto you people. But at the end of the day, we're doing this to deliver our own selves, man. I'm gonna be real. I don't wanna die by nuclear fire. Yeah. I don't wanna die. Yeah, man. So if your grandma don't get it, let that old wine bottle not get it. That wine skin not get it. She'll be rebirthing the kingdom, Lord willing. Same for your daddy, your mama, your sister, your brother, your auntie, your uncle. You cannot get it. Let me get the scripture back. Yep. What y'all should I say? You cannot, we cannot get emotional. Mm -hmm. And it's truth, man. Mm-hmm. Just can't. Mm -hmm. Because it's just business. Yep. <laughs> it ain't personal, it's business, man. Yeah, you got it. This is Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. 
Mm. And he that loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So you gotta be putting that most high first, bro. If you love your mom, your dad, more than the Heavenly Father and your house shy, that's not gonna work. You, you gotta put this shoe first. Yep. Your daughter too. Because there's been times to where I've heard in my own family, oh, you're not spending time with your daughter, you just out there teaching. Mm. <laughs> I want the most high to save me yeah. and my daughter. Yeah, bro. right, right. Y'all niggas gonna, right. I'm not saying that y'all, but if y'all don't repent, y'all gonna die. Yep. Cause your daughter's an extension of you. So if you helping yourself out, he gonna, that, he's looking at your daughter. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, on behalf of my son that was obedient, I'm gonna save his daughter yeah, as well. Honestly, that, that's really why I'm out here, bro. To yep. save myself and my daughter. Yep. Look at Noah. Now, no, was Noah's family actually helping him build the ark? It wasn't in the scriptures. We didn't read that in the scriptures. Noah built the ark. But yeah, through his true. obedience, that's his whole point. family got saved. And what, what scripture? <laughs> There's a scripture that... Uh, Hebrews 11? Yeah, I, I yeah. think Paul, Paul wrote something about... Uh, you doing the work, you can save, you can save, like... Oh, 1 Corinthians 7. Yeah, you can save yeah. in your household. Yeah, I'm going to get that. Uh, uh, Hebrews 11, verse uh, 7. By faith, Noah being warned of uh, Yahweh of things not seen as yet, which is prophecy, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. See that? His house, man. Meaning his whole family. By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith see that and also lamb backing on that on that point the brother had made right we live in a culture our culture is basically how was our culture started the lord commanded our forefather abraham to sacrifice his son isaac now did abraham say no i love my son too much lord you gave me my son my only son i can't sacrifice no abraham said you know what hey if it be what it is it is Abraham was so faithful to where he had, he had the knife damn near at his throat, man. Until an angel, you know, told, hey, chill, man. We just wanted to test you. We just wanted to see if you was about it, man. Right? So, we are saying at the end of the day, we can't love our family more than you have a bunch of mouth shot can, man. Yeah, because uh, another thing that, uh, you know, like it says in Romans 15 and 4, when was written for us, how was written for our learning, we read Joe, mm. outside, destroy some of his kids. Mm. But, Gave me both of you gave me double. Yep. That's how I look at it, you yep. know. We're gonna give we're gonna have more kids, we're gonna have more wives. Yep. And what the Lord tells or what did Joe say in Joe 1 and 21? He says, uh, for the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. <laughs> and naked, naked that I come in the womb. Yeah. Naked should I leave. Yeah, man, that's the type of mindset you that's, that's the mindset of a pilgrim, man. And that's what the Lord commanded us to be in these days. Seeing that death, this man is death, man. Right? Now, although we're not expecting death. You know, and we understand that just by him ruling, man, chaos is going to be, man, we, hey, listen, this ain't the time to be comfortable. This ain't the time to, you know, build a family. Uh, and what was he saying? Uh, how guys use Jeremiah 28 to basically uh, give them an excuse to try to build here and shit. Isn't that what you saying that uh, before we started the camera? No, I said, uh, don't, don't, don't let, because Jeremiah 211, I think it says, uh, is Israel a homeborn slave? Oh, oh, I 2 don't. and 11. Oh, yeah. God. I think, yeah, I think it's 2 and 11. Oh, okay. 2 and 11. Yeah. But uh, basically, like, don't be a slave to this to this society, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, don't let your job stop you from the work. Yep. You know, like, I know, you know, we know you got to pay bills and stuff, but, you know, don't, don't be worried, you know, too, too caught up in your job and stuff, bro, because yeah. this shit's about to go. Yep. Hey, when you read 2nd Ezra, I'm glad you said that, bro. When you read 2nd Ezra, um... Uh, 16 in the uh, GNT. <laughs> I'm not I'm to meet that in GNT. Come nah, on, bro. It's, it's beautiful. I heard the GNT got a lot of... Uh, yeah, this second letter, 16, verse 40 in the GNT. It says, listen to my message, my people, and get ready for the battle. But And the battle's already here. We've been we battling the spirit right now. Ephesians chapter 6, it says, when the disasters come, <laughs> see that? When the disasters come, you must live as people whose home is not in this world. And what's a person like that? A pilgrim. Says, merchants must not expect to make a profit from what they sell. They must be ready to run for their lives. Their customers must expect to lose whatever they buy. Whoever builds a house should not plan to live in it. Farmers should not expect to harvest their crops or pick their grapes. Those who marry must not expect to have children. And those who don't marry must live as if they have been widowed. Check this out. Key point. Like brother has said, if you got a job, it, hey, listen, don't be dying for this job. Don't be killing yourself for this thing. It says, verse 45, anything 
anything that is done will be useless. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what second major sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 the time. Oh man. Right now. Yeah. Anything that's gonna be done is useless, man. Right? Hey, you man, listen. You we live in the times of where damn near half the police departments around the country done quit. You know, firemen they 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 trailing them behind. Right? Now if Esau can give up this shit, why well, niggas can't do it, man? Because a nigga loves uh, Babylon the Great, bro. Right. Like I like I always say. Jake loves the society because you can do, you know, so-called whatever you want. They just want to, they just want more of the pie. Because mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. right now we got the drums, they just want more of the pie. Yep, yep. But really, Jake don't really see nothing wrong in society. But if you, if you have a righteous spirit, this society is just wicked, bro. Because earlier I was talking to Jake on my break, and he was saying how, you know, he don't believe in God. He asked me, you was like, are you a black dude? Because like, hmm. I asked him if you believe in God. Mm -hmm. Point is, I asked. Oh, he asked you that just because of it? Yeah, because I asked him, I was like, uh, if, I, if someone has sex with your wife, like, how do you know that's wrong? Like, is that wrong? Because mm -hmm. honestly, bro, deep down inside, everybody gets their morals from the scriptures. You don't, you don't know that having sex with somebody's wife or stealing from somebody is wrong. You know because the Bible, the Bible tells you that. Yep. And yep. Jake, Jake just, he's, Jake is just lost, bro. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Like, like the scripture you said earlier, bro. Jake uh, despises this word and trusts in the pressure. Because he heard about the Israelites. Cause he asked me, he was like, you be out there teaching? You know, I didn't tell him. Mm -hmm. That's not his business. Yeah. But um, that's Jake knows, bro. Yep. Jake just despises the word. Exactly. And I'm going to get that revelation. Are oh, you holding something? Yeah, I was going to get uh, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 10. Okay, fit. hold that. Yeah. I'm going to get this in Revelation in 6, uh, in, ver in, the, in the NLT version, what we read earlier. It says, I looked up and saw a horse whose color was pale green. His rider was named Death, and his and his companion was the grave. These two were given authority over one fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, and famine, and disease. Hold up, <laughs> just in case y'all didn't catch it. To kill with the sword, famine, and disease. Man, what has been what has basically been this pandemic all about? The, the, the C-19, man. Disease. And now he's about to kill you with what? Famine. <laughs> Proving to you that, hey, this book is alive, man. It's alive and well. Yeah, this, this, uh, this, the, this book has all the answers, bro. Yep. Now, uh, yeah, get that. And I'll, I'll get Isaiah. Uh, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 10. But the ungodly shall be punished. Ooh. According to their own imaginations, mm. which have neglected the and why the Lord why the Lord flood the planet Earth the first time because of their wicked imaginations. You read that in Genesis. As a matter of fact, I'll grab that. It's the book of Genesis, chapter six, verse uh, Genesis six and five. And Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, just like today. And that every imagination, and what is Esau, when you read Revelation 13 and 16, what is he known for making people do? Bow down to his image. Image is the root word of imagination. <laughs> so people are worshiping the imagination of so-called white men. This man has imagined ways for you to live according to his standards. Yeah, by his so-called democracy. Yeah. This whole society, bro, is the way of... It's like what it's saying Esau's thoughts bro Yep Because your mind is very important The way you think mm -hmm. Is very important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says The wickedness of man Was great in the earth And that every imagination Of the thoughts Of his heart Was only evil Continually Just like today All you people think about Is evil Continually <laughs> Right Like if you try to have A righteous conversation With somebody They think you're crazy bro. Right like right. they, they, they look at you like something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. if you If you say, nah, don't you wrong Or, yep. you know, I should have steal from somebody Or, you know, I, I'm not going to rob you Or, I, smoke weed's bad They they look at you as like, you're like, what's wrong with you, bro? Yeah, yeah So that shows you, bro, we're, we're living in the days of Noah Yep So yeah, you got your verse It says, um Which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord Woo! So yeah, basically, it's saying the ungodly is going to be punished because they have neglected the Lord and forsaken his righteous ways. They hate the law. Yep. And this is uh, Isaiah 3 and 1, going back to this famine, says, For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, and the very fact that the Lord is titling himself 
the Lord of Hosts. What was that? You saw that? Oh, nah, what happened, oh, I thought somebody was wrong. Though. The yeah. very fact that the Lord was tiling, you know, the Lord of hosts, yep. meaning he's poised to come against you people in war. That word host means heaven's armies. Yep. Says, the Lord of hosts doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the state and the staff. What does that mean? Basically, your support. And what's your support? Esau says, the whole state of bread and the whole state of water. So we're living in those times to where Right? The Lord's about to make those those curses cleave unto you triple fold, man. Right? As a matter of fact, let me go to Leviticus 26 to prove that. Right? Because the Lord is about to take away from the Israelites, once again, the two-thirds of our people, bread and water. Meaning, food, man. Leviticus 26 and... Yep. Woo! Woo! Man. I'm going to start at verse 23. And if you will not be reformed by me, by these things, right? And what's that word reform mean? Re meaning back again and form basically means back in his original shape or image. Basically, key word repentance. So if you don't repent by, by me, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times uh, for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you. And who's that sword? Esau, man. You can read in Ezekiel chapter 21 where he speaks about how he's going to bring that sword out of his sheath, man. Esau's about to be, about to come out of the Lord's sheath. And the Lord's about to use his sword just like you can read in Isaiah 10 how he likened the Syrian Empire as that, uh, as that, um, that, that staff, that rod. And the Syrian, they had a great powerful empire. Yeah. I was reading it in, uh, I think, Isaiah 37. Mm hmm. And they yeah, had, they had a war with uh, Hezekiah. Yep, I need to read that again. Yeah, because Isaiah, he was in the Assyrian and Babylonian captivity, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, he say, um, and I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. Woo! <laughs> and when you are gathered together within your cities, see that? Just like today, I will send the pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. So the Lord's going to, man, this is cold. The Lord is saying he's going to gather y'all to these cities. Basically, he's going to block you in. He's going to lay a siege around you. Jake loves being in the hood, so the Lord going to trap your ass in the hood. He's going to send forth the, the C-19, all these other variants and the, the things stranger than that. Then he's going to allow your enemies to come round you up. Who would ever know? This was in Leviticus 26, you know? And he says, and when I have broken the staff of your bread, see that? <laughs> Meaning, when I have taken away your bread from you. Ten women shall bake your bread in one oven. Come on, man. And oh, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. So what does that mean? Ten women shall bake your bread in one oven. Basically, meaning all these women are trying to find, they're trying to scrap up all this flour and meal and corn, and you only gonna they're gonna bake it in one oven, man. Ten women gonna try to find flour and corn. To try to feed you, they're gonna bake. They, it's, it's gonna be so small you could bake it in one oven. And he says you're gonna eat it by weight. Basically, meaning you're gonna have to ration the way how you eat your food because you don't even have enough. And that's what's coming up, man. You're gonna have to ration out your food unless you got that dragon juice inside your arm. You cannot go into these grocery stores. You're gonna have to ration out your food. You're gonna have to basically disperse what you got, you know, to your loved ones, to your little newborn baby. We're gonna deliver you in that those days. Woo, who's like gonna? What, what, I think Ezra said that. Yeah. What was me? What was me? Yeah. Shouldn't live in those days. <laughs> right. And he says, and if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but will walk contrary unto me, then I will also walk contrary unto you, and also in fury, and I will, and I even I will chastise you seven times for your sins. And check this out. And you shall give me Second Kings chapter six. And you shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters shall you eat. Cannibalism is about to come back in a major way. Yeah, that, that, that's in our history too as well. Yeah, that happened that, to us. yeah, that's the second game. Yeah, we're about to read that. Cannibalism is about to happen, man. See, you're going to have inflation. You're going to have uh, food. You're going to have famines. You're going to have, uh, 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 you know, uh, cannibalism. Second These, six. Yeah, uh, second no, Second Kings 6. What? Those uh six in uh Second Kings chapter six and start at verse uh as a matter of fact start at verse 
Start at verse uh, 24. Come. This is 2 Kings chapter 6 and 24. And it came to pass after this that Ben had died, uh -huh. king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. So just like, like brother saying, this happened to our history, right? We got besieged at one point. Now, when you go into that word siege, this is literally what we're in right now. Now, the elites are not calling in the siege, but by definition of what they're doing, you were, Jake, you were in a siege. You were being waged war against, and you don't even know it. This, this word siege means, uh, siege, a military operation in which enemy forces surround a town or building, cutting off essential supplies, right? Now, the biggest talk that's been going on for the last week or two was what? Right, the, the, the port of uh, LA is shut down right now, right? The essential supplies are cut off. And who cut them off? It's not like they don't have any supplies. They just cut them off. Yeah, because ain't this supposed to be the so-called richest country in the world? Right. And Biden said that we will not unload these ships until every American... <laughs> the so-called got the juice. Get the juice, man. What you call that? That's a siege. And it says, with the aim of compelling the surrender of those inside. With the aim of compelling the surrender of those inside. So just like the Lord basically stars you out to get down with his program, Esau does the same thing, man. Revelation 13, 16 says that he causes all, basically meaning make all, right? Small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, right? To receive a mark in their right hand forehead so that they cannot buy or sell, man. So Esau is making you get down with the program by starving your ass out. Why? Because he is death and hell and he kills with the sword and with famine. And that's literal, bro. That's not <laughs> spiritual. Revelation 13, 16 on down is not spiritual. That's literally going to happen. And it says uh, to receive a so-called mark, you know, rich, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, that's going to be literal, bro. That's not spiritual. Because if it is spiritual, if it is a philosophy, can you please tell me which philosophy it is so I can know? Right. Christianity, they say. Like, come on, bro. You know? They say it's Christianity, man. Right? Well, we don't see Christianity being pushed no more. You know? Yeah, so, sorry to cut you off. But no, the average good. Jake, bro, <laughs> even these Jakes that don't know the so-called Israelites, they know that something's off with the Christian church, bro. Yeah. So, really, bro, no one's pushing that Christianity anymore, okay? Yep. So, that that's not the answer. Yeah, you may could have said that in 2003 and got away with it, which they did, you know. You know? But, hey, you can't get away with that now, bro. You know? No, nobody fuck with Christianity. The pastors don't even fuck with Christianity no more. They just in it because they're getting money, man. Esau don't give a damn about Christianity. Yeah, everybody found it's a joke. It's always been a joke. Yeah, it's really the niggas that's in it, man. You know? And like, they and like they waking a, up out of it. Like Apostle Sahar always says, some of the dumbest people on earth are the black, the black Christian church. The black Christian church. Facts. Facts. I'm going to keep reading this word, siege. It says, <clears throat> an operation in which a police or other force surround a building and cut off supplies with the aiming of forcing an armed person to surrender. Right? Because they know that these, these gun-toting rednecks, they got guns. Yeah. But they know that they can make these niggas surrender and just take their food away. And this was the biggest mistake of allowing your government to give you food, to have grocery stores, right? Because in the ancient world, you got your own damn food. But when you allow this man complete control of you having to go to him, as a matter of fact, give me that Deuteronomy 28, yeah, 48. Say, that's kind of, yep. that's, that's part of the curse though. Yep, that's the curse. Yeah. That's the curse, all right? This was a setup all along, man. See, everything that Esau pushes in his agenda, he always has a facade of, of being convenient. So he'll put that idea about, oh, how convenient would it be Instead of you having to go out there and go hunt your own food, we'll hunt it for you. And then we'll package it. You know, all you got to do is just pay a little tax on it. And then you don't have to, hey, you could go home, you know, and don't worry about, you know, cleaning no gut, no deer. You, it's all right there. See, everything is labeled conveniency and facade for this devil on the back end to fuck you, man. Right? <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 28. To lock you. And this is why scriptures tell, this is why Yahweh had told Adam, by the sweat of your brow, by your brow, shall you gather your bread. 
another man shouldn't be gathering your bread for you, man. Right? You should be working for you. You, you plant your own seed. You reap your own fields. Right? This is a curse to let death and hell plant and reap fields for yeah. you, man. Especially out of all people, the Edomites. Right. Yeah. And now we see what this man doing. Like I said, Bill Gates done bought up all the farmland. So now with this man having full control of your food, now he's going to say, fuck y'all. Unless y'all get, uh, uh, get down this dragon juice and this karagma, you're not going to eat no more. I got to say this real, real fast. Like the brother's saying, another man should never be <laughs> having your own food for you because look what this devil's doing. The FDA approves, you know, you got, we got 10% bugs in our food, rat poison. Right, and a peanut butter, you got yeah, yeah. nasty shit. Yeah, so like you said, we should never let this devil put, put stuff and control our food, bro. Yep. But exactly. like I said, that goes back to the curse. Uh-huh. It's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Uh-huh. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. See that? And now, now, who is to say <laughs> who this particular person is? Your enemy, man. Right? Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Uh-huh. In hunger. In hunger. That's how the Lord's going to send the so-called white man against you. That's how he has. In hunger. Go ahead. And in thirst. And in, oh no, why does it say in hunger? Because that's fast forward to Revelation 6. He shall kill with the sword and famine. That's the first thing. Come on, man. Go ahead. And in thirst. And in nakedness. And in want of all Hold things. Hold on, I just got an update on my phone. Breaking news. CDC approves uh, that Boost Mobile for all three U.S. C-19 dragon juices gives green light to mix and match, you know? So we see this man in a more desperate attempt to say, fuck it, mix and match, it don't matter if it's Johnson and, and, and Hanson or the uh, the McKerner or whatever, you know, you know, y'all know what I'm saying, I gotta speak in codes, cause you know. But hey, he's, he's by all means necessary, get that shit in their arms. He's desperate, bro. Desperate. Because when have you ever seen anything been pushed like this ever in America? Yep. He's desperate, bro. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Start from the top, Bible Shah. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 48. Uh -huh. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, Ooh. and in thirst, Ooh. and in nakedness, and in want of all things. Mm. And, and in want of all things. Mm -hmm. Meaning your food. You want food, you got to go to him. You want a cell phone? Yep. You got to go to him. You want to get a car? You got to go to him. You want religion? Go to him. You want to get a house? Go to him. Man. This is a curse, bro. You want a wife? You got to go to him. Well, I ain't going to him for that. Yeah. yeah, I know what you're saying, bro. Yeah. You got to get the so-called uh, marriage certificate. They're going to look at you funny. Man. Well, I ain't doing that shit. You that see that? Exactly, man. So this is all going back to what we're reading about, man. All right? So the stage has been set. All right? If you doubting who Esau is, if you still thinking that Esau's the Arabs, bro. You, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this just is not for you. And, and honestly, to, to really understand the scriptures, you got to know some history. Yep. And that's true. Like, you really got to be a, a little mean scholar and know some history. Mm -hmm. If you study how the Romans uh, had their society, how, what was the downfall of the Romans, it's very par parallel to how America is about to fall. You know? And that proves that the Romans were Edomites, so-called white people. Yep. So that proves that, you know, Babylon the Great is ran by Edomites. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you said that. We'll grab that in Luke 19, verse 43, talks about how the Romans besieged Israel. Yeah, right? Because Romans, they're doing the same thing again today. Right? And it says, 2 Kings 6 and 24, and it came to pass after this that Ben Hadad, king of Assyria, Salaki, Assyria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. It says, and there was a great famine in Samaria. And this, once again, it's going to be a great famine here in America, man. Pretty soon, and he says, and behold, they besieged it until the ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver. That's 80, oh, um, yeah, two, four, six, eight, yeah, 80 pieces of silver. That's a lot, bro. That back then, that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's a lot. And they bought what with it? A uh, ass's head. Like, a uh, ass's head, that's a, that's a donkey's head. It ain't got no meat on it. You know, it's just skull. You eating eyeballs and shit, yeah. tongue. Why does it say that? You know, going to show you that. You know, hey, you're gonna be you're gonna be paying top dollar to get that French fry under your grandma's car seat. I mean, under your grandma's seat in a Toyota Camry that was sitting there in 2005. <laughs> you're gonna be paying top dollar just to get that, right? And it says, uh, and they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver, and that's 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 also inflation. 
says, and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung, meaning dove shit, was for sold for five pieces of silver. So these people were so hungry that they were buying bird shit to eat. This is in the scriptures. And that's gonna happen, like nothing new in the song, bro. Nothing new no, no, in the song. When you're hungry, you're desperate. You don't know what you're gonna do. Yep. You, know? you don't try to do the body. The body's gonna try to fight to survive, bro. That's one thing. The body, you know how the most I set it up. Yep. So where you're hungry, bro, you're desperate. You're gonna do anything to get that food, get the next meal. Exactly. You know? You're gonna be betraying your so-called brothers. Mm-hmm. Talking about people in the world, you're gonna be betraying, you know, your so-called friends. Yeah. You know, you gonna you don't know what you're gonna do in that day. Yep. Cause cannibalism may sound weird and off Like man I would never eat another human But man have you ever been put in a predicament To where your brain is playing tricks on you And another human is like a walking uh, chicken leg You know <laughs> That shit would happen but It's a curse I'm just imagining bro Our, our history like well, Israelites we did this Like we had to eat our own kids Yep. Yep. Your own kids bro can you imagine that Yep. The own, like, someone who came out of you yep. You have to eat them bro That's just scary bro to think about Man Going, and, and that's also going to show you that mankind, without the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, according to Isaiah 33 and 6, is why he likens mankind as into beasts. Because beasts eat their own kind. You know? <laughs> yeah, Jake, Jake has turned to a beast, bro. Yeah. Like, like it says, Jeremiah, thou has turned to the, the genuine plant. Mm -hmm. The most high, bro, he doesn't even know you anymore, Jake. Man. You are not who he created you to be. Oh, holy, righteous, peculiar people. You, that's not who you are today, Jake. Yep. Why is that? Because uh, we're in the land of our enemies. Exactly. Yeah, verse 26. And as the king of Israel was passing upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, If the if Yahweh does not help thee, when shall I help thee? So he's saying, if the Lord can't help you, how can I help you? <laughs> he said, Out of the barn floor or the wine or out of the wine press? Says basically saying, Can I give you something to eat or drink? Says, and the king said unto her, What elleth thee? Basically, meaning, what, what's, what's wrong with you? And she answered, And this woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today. See that? Give my son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give your son that we may eat him. And she hid her son. Now, you know, just to make it simple and plain. Yeah, yeah she, she didn't want to. Uh, yeah, yeah. She didn't want to. <laughs> Cosmo, can you imagine that? Yep. I'm going to get in an NLT, you know, just to, just in case, you know, because I know KJV could kind of be awful on some people. Yeah, it's hard to understand the, the old English or something. Yeah. Ah. Second Kings 6 and 28 in the NLT. And this is what the woman has said. She says, um, but... The king answered, what is the matter? She replied, this woman said to me, come on, let's eat your son today. <laughs> then we will eat my son tomorrow. So we cooked my son and ate him. Then the next day I said to her, kill your son so we can eat him. But she hid in her son. Right, so going to show you, desperate times calls for desperate measures, man. When you're hungry, you're going to do some strange things that you never thought you would. And this is something that happened to Israel, man. Whenever those curses came upon us, cannibalism came, famine came, massive death came, plagues came, being discontinued from your nationality came, forgetting who you are came, serving other gods came, being in a strange land came. Prophets had to be risen up. Nothing new under the sun, man. And guess who was always there at the scene of the crime? Esau. Esau. Right, so we, huh? we got taken down by the ancient Babylonians. Mm -hmm. So I was there cheering them on. Yep, Isaiah 30, uh, 137. You know, so hey, and we're back to those times where Esau is not just in the scenes looking at you, he's right up in your face, man. He right up in your face saying, I got full sway and control of you, finally. I've been, bro, <laughs> Esau, I've been waiting for the, as a matter of fact, let me prove that. Right? Let me get there. Genesis 27, verse uh, 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing uh, wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. Now, did Esau, did the man Esau actually slay the man Jacob? No. 
This was a prophecy. And when's that prophecy gonna be fulfilled? Right here, right now, man. So Esau finally is going to slay his brother Jacob, man. Right? <laughs> and there's only one way out. It's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. And where are we hiding ourselves at? Away from this crazy ass man. In the bosom of your house by shot in this ark, man. Right? You got something? I was gonna say, uh, he's gonna he's gonna start killing Jacob on a higher level. Man. Because honestly, he's been killing Jacob. But he's gonna start killing Jacob on a higher level. Yeah, yeah. This is when that's this this prophecy is really gonna be fulfilled. Because you think slavery was something, you know? Because how many of us was killed in slavery? On the on the way over here. About 200 million and I about uh, another 200 million died on the way. And that's just what Esau said. Yeah. Truly would never know. Yeah, and that's just what he said. But how many how many Negroes, so-called Negroes, Latino Americans, live in the United States or Babylon today right now? Way more than 200 million. Yeah. So <laughs> just imagine, man, the times of slavery, you know, you're going to be pelling, you're going to be, you're going to be blushing at that, man, you know? And we know how rigorous and, and, and rigid that was. So these are the times that, that Daniel 12 and 1 should be coming to mind. Jeremiah 30 and 7 come to mind. Matthew 24, 2 Edith chapter 16, right? Jacob's trouble. That's why he's saying it's Jacob's trouble. Why? Because Esau's after your ass. Yeah, it's literally, <laughs> it's literally Jacob. It's Israel's trouble. Yeah, and that's why, because Esau's trying to slay you. See, this, going again, once again, showing you that this whole book is about Jacob and Esau. Whenever Esau's in trouble, why is it? Because Jacob's on his ass. Whenever Jacob is in trouble, why is it? Because Esau's on his ass. Like a seesaw. Yep, like a seesaw. This is Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 5. Mm. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. See that perpetual. What does perpetual mean? An ongoing cycle, right? Like forever. <laughs> forever. A perpetual hatred for what? Go ahead. And has shed the blood of the children of Israel. And shed the blood of the children of Israel, the so-called black spanking Native Americans. That's what the so-called white man has done. Yep. Esau has done it to his brother. Yep. Right? Go ahead. By the force of the sword. I see that? In the time of their calamity. Woo! So when we was catching hell, when we was going through it, that's when they came in, bro. Yep. Man. And it says, and the time that their iniquity had an end. Man, and the time is when their iniquity had an end. And when is that going to, and you're going to say this is a prophecy. Yeah, yeah, it's about to, it's about to explain. Yep, yeah, okay, all right, keep reading. Verse six, therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, I will prepare thee unto blood, mm. and blood shall pursue thee, saith, I mean, since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. So Man. basically what it's saying is, you Edomites didn't hate shedding our blood, the Most High is not gonna, he's not gonna basically hate shedding your blood. Yep, yep, matter of fact, Revelation 16 and 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, uh, for they are worthy. So the Lord is saying, I'm going to give you blood to drink because you're worthy of it, man. Now the cup of the Lord is going to pass away from us. You know, Grammy Lamentations 2, uh, 4 and 22. It's going to pass away from us, and now it's going to go into the daughter of Edom. Right? Because our iniquity is at an end. Right? At least for the elect. Starting with the elect. It must be after Jeremiah. Yeah, it's right after Jeremiah. Let me take two. I got a three. I thought it was before Jeremiah. Okay. And why are you getting that? Oh, you got it? Yep. You said 422? Yep. Fine. Uh, yeah, we want to start with 21? Yeah. Yeah. Lamentation chapter 4 verse 21 Rejoice and be glad O daughter of Edom Yeah, why is scripture telling you to rejoice and be glad? Because you're still ruling right now Right, so live it up Right, if you're an Edomite, listen If you're an Edomite, listen to this This is the best advice I got to give you Apart from, you know, getting ready for slavery Which, you know, you're going to die If you're in America, you're going to die Right, you're not going to slavery first and foremost Right, you'll be regenerating to the kingdom From the loins of your four parents you know, your relatives on the other side of the world right now, right? But right now, <laughs> you need to get ready for death. But before you get ready for death, live it up. Yeah. Live up these final hours before your lockdown comes, right? Go to go to them, go to a- Go to a, a, a application, go to yeah. Hawaii, go <laughs> yeah. to Japan, do something. Yep, get on a carnival cruise ship. Yep, yep, ship, yep. You know, and, and live it up, right? Go ahead. It's locked. 
Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, mm -hmm. that dwellest in the land of Uz. Yep. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. So the cup also shall pass through. Meaning that the, that cup that we've been drinking of and you've been watching us drink it, man. Right? That same cup. And what does that cup consist of? Slavery. You know? Rape, rob, murder. Right? Although we're not going to be raping you in the kingdom. But we will rob you. We will murder you. <laughs> and we will enslave you. Right? Yeah, you're going to drink of that cup. Go ahead. Shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. Yeah, and what does that mean? You shall drink and you shall make yourself naked. Basically mean we're going to see, all the nations are going to see the so-called white man's shame. All these nations hate America right now. They see the shame of America. Right? Nobody wants to be associated with America. <laughs> right? This is scriptures talking, man. Right? This man has become so drunken in his own pride. Right? Hey, it was that Habakkuk? Shameful spewing shall be their glory. Right? Now everybody sees you for exactly who you are. Just vomit, man. Right? <laughs> Nakedness has covered you. Right? Just like, and also, you know, when you consider us, when we was on the on auction blocks, right? We were stripped down. We was literally, literally naked. naked, man. Shameful, you know, getting tossed to and fro to whichever highest bidder all bought these, us. All the curses that happened to us, like it says through Army 30, you're going to be sold on auction blocks, Esau. Yep. All yep. you nations have touched this. Yep. And it's got to happen, man. He said the cup shall pass through. Yeah. And it says, Jeremiah, if you don't want to uh, mm, take the yep. cup, I mean, I'm, I'm I get roughly it. paraphrased. If you don't want to take the cup, well, you're going to die anyway. <laughs> yep. So you better just take the cup. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I got, it. I got it right here. Yeah, you go ahead. It says, uh, verse 22, the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. Woo! Go ahead. Okay. All daughter of Zion. So so everybody loves to say, well, wasn't it y'all that, that rejected Messiah? Right? Wasn't yeah. it y'all that... Didn't the Jews you know? reject Christ? Yeah. Well, yeah, it was. But guess what? The punishment of us for doing that... It's finished. When you read Jeremiah chapter, <laughs> <laughs> when you read Jeremiah chapter fifty, it says that how the Lord. Let me get that real quick. Cause who can lay to charge against the Lord's elect? Yep. Yeah, we did some fucked up shit. Oh, it's a lucky from our French. We did some messed up stuff, but guess what? Hey, the Lord forgave us, man. Cause it was written. It's Jeremiah fifty and twenty. In those days and in that time, said Yahweh, that the iniquity of Israel shall be sought out for. So people are going to be looking for charges and accusations to bring against Israel. But what does the Lord say? And there shall be none. And the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found. For I will pardon them whom I reserve. See that? So you these, these people are going to be looking for ways to accuse the Lord's bride. You know? But we're going to be blameless, faultless. Why? Because of Yahweh Bashamah Shah. Yahweh Shah's blood, man. Oh, I pardon him. Who are you to try to lay anything charged against him? Oh, because you're trying to lay charge against him. Now let's bring up your dirt. Let's take you in captivity. Get that cup, boy. Right? So yeah, you got it. Oh, daughter of Zion, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. So captivity is not coming anymore after we leave about this thing. It's the last captivity. It's the last captivity, man. Daniel chapter 2 gives you a whole outline of all the nations, right, that had us in, in, in their grip. And this is the last... Win the toes, man. Right? You ain't have, you know, you ain't have nothing after the toes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and we, this is it. All right, you got it. He will no more carry thee away to captivity. Uh -huh. He will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. And we're in those times where the Lord's visiting America since. Right? This is why it's only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Because we're looking at the transition or the translation of kingdoms going on. Right? Where the Lord is taking the rule and reign of terror away from Esau, Edom. And he's about to give us this power, man. Right? <laughs> and how did he say this power was going to first come unto us? Acts chapter 1. I want to say verse 6. And you shall receive power of the Holy Spirit. No, he's still He says you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit come upon you. See, because there's a, a long time where the Israelites, we didn't have the Holy Spirit inside of us. In slavery, we didn't have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Because if we did, we would be in the truth. Right, but we received that power once the Holy Spirit came upon us and he breathed into our nostrils and we stood upon our feet in the last days like Revelation 11 says, Ezekiel 37 says, right? Hey, you got something? Uh, he will discover thy sins. Woo! That's pretty much it on that. Yep, so the Lord's discovering this place of sins. Right, because there's things that we talk about 
you know, that what Esau has done, what he has hidden, you know. But it's not truly, it's not fully sought out yet. No we don't, way. we don't really know the depth, you know, and the and the deep dark, the dark stuff that this man actually does. We know that he's into pedophilia, he's into necromancy, all that crazy shit, you know, mediums and. But we don't truly know what these elites are really doing, man, behind closed doors, right? But the Lord is going to bring. Give me uh, Luke twelve and one. This is Luke chapter twelve from the top. In the meantime, when they were gathered together, an innumerable multitude of people, and so much that they trolled one upon another, uh -huh. and began to say unto his disciples. Oh, he's verse two. Okay, verse two. For there is nothing covered. For there is nothing covered. Go ahead. That shall be not revealed. That shall not be revealed. See that? Is that you know that? Neither hid that shall not be known. Neither hid that shall not be known. Now, why does he say there is nothing that shall not? There is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Because we're in the times so like when you read Lamentation chapter 4, he says he's going to reveal Edom's sins, man. He's going to discover his sins. So much important, you got a whole book called Revelation. When you go into that word Revelation, it means revealing, a unveiling. See, and we just unveiled who this man was in Revelation 6 and 8, right? <laughs> this man is death and hell, and he kills with the, uh, and the sword, with the sword, with famine, with disease, pestilence, and the beasts of the earth. So we know who this is. It has to be you, son. Gotta be him. Cause this whole this whole society, bro, is death. Yep. The American diet is death, bro. It's it's bound to see you to the hospital. Yep. Cause they get paid when you go to the hospital. Mm. It's all about money, bro. Uh huh. It says verse three. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And this man, and this man speaks a lot of things in darkness. When you go into the way how this man speaks, it's through his laws. There's laws that's being passed every night. <laughs> And you don't even know about it until the time when when uh when a national state of emergency has come and they say, oh yeah, according to this law, according to section 1,000, uh, 222 section uh, or, or article one, right? You're you're in violation of that. Well, hold on, I, I don't remember this law. Oh yeah, we wrote it in darkness, right? <laughs> See, this man, hey, this is the devil that we're dealing with, man. So it behooves you Israelites, you so-called black Spangled Native Americans, to turn back into your power, man. His name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shah. Holy Spirit is Rakakwadash, man. Right? We're living in beautiful but yet dangerous times, man. So with that, we hope y'all was edified. We want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Yahweh Shah, 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 Yah